Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And you'll be very pleased to know, and as you can probably tell by just looking at the screen, I have finally left Agnea. So I reckon that we've got enough vulcanite being produced over there that it's time to go off and mess around with something else. And I think everybody's probably very glad of that because I'd spent about a month on that planet. So, um, and that's, uh, I don't know whether that's including the uh, amount of time we spent uh, with me not playing because I was away on holiday last week. So, let's have a look at what's going on this time. As you can see, I'm now back up in Norvis orbit and some changes have been made. Um, now, most of the most of the belt along here, most of all, all, in fact, all of this system along here is exactly the same as it's been for a while. So, this is producing all of the all of the science packs that we're trying to do trying to deal with at the moment and doing the science over here in these labs. So, these are running perfectly well. They're Yes, it, is, it just is. It's, it's running running nicely. Uh, we have a nice supply of both the energy science and the optimization tech cards. Uh, actually, the energy science is running a little bit low, but we are making it, I promise. Um, I think <laughs> it should be on this belt somewhere. Anyway, so yes, in theory at least, we are making we are making that science, and it's being, all being done over here. But none of this has changed. I think it's just that this is rather slow, and at the moment we have more science being do trying to be done by the science labs than we are actually producing the, the uh, resources for. So. But we've not touched that this time. That stuff that's already been there. What we've put in, the new thing is, well, Tristan's put in a load more rail, and this is currently a sort of a, a framework for where everything is intended to go. But one of the things we put in now is this belt down the middle here. And these, these, these two belts are supposed to be a disposal system for basically any of the rubbish that's produced by science production. So that is going to be lots and lots of things. So, for example, over, over here we are producing quite a lot of... Um, no, maybe not here. Over here, we're producing a certain amount of scrap that's going down shoots down here and being disposed of. We're producing contaminated scrap as well. We're producing um, junk data cards. We're producing data cards that have been used and need to be reformatted. To, uh, sorry, that is the junk data cards. We're reproducing more of the data cards that can be reused. There's, there's just lots and lots of things that are coming out of this system that are all counted as sort of as rubbish that we want to just get rid of and then try and recycle. So my big push in the last stream was to produce a sort of a recycling system. So the idea is we drop all of that nonsense onto these belts down here. It gets passed all the way down here <clears throat> and into the recycling area. And eventually if we expand off to the, to the west as well, then we'll have more belts coming in from over here and we'll merge them and so on. So as you can see, the scrap is coming down here and in the future we'll have more stuff coming down here as well. So we're then filtering out. We're filtering out first the uh, the junk data cards. So we're going to have a row of machine of uh, supercomputers out here that are going to be formatting them. We'll we'll make that as many as is needed just to keep it keep it balanced. Um, and so we'll we won't have problems unless the unless the belts fill up completely. We've also got a small area up here that is going to be um, cooling thermofluid. So actually these do need to be programmed like that. Um, and eventually we don't have any thermofluid at the moment, as you can clearly tell by the fact that there is nothing here. Um, but I, my, my first thought was over here we're going to be doing the energy science. So we're going to be bringing in thermofluid to this area. So we can just drop it off here, have a pipe that goes across the railway lines, which is a bit naughty, but I think we can, I think I can, I can uh, deal with that. And that will feed a small amount of warm thermofluid in over here. Into this into this pipe, which can then be cooled down. Go around here, cool, chill the uh, chill the supercomputers while they reformat the memory cards, and be passed around here to be warmed, warm, uh, to be cooled back down again after it's been warmed up. Now, later on, we're going to advance to more types of to more advanced reformatting recipes that are going to need more inputs. But they're going to need sorry, they're going to need colder inputs. So we'll then put in a row of um, hypercoolers along here, I guess, that are going to then take the um, the chilled thermofluid, the, the cool thermofluid, and take it down to cold, and then super chilled um, eventually. And we'll pipe that in as necessary into the machines down here, so we can keep so we can keep the formatting running nicely. But there's a bit of room, there's a bit of space up here, not as much as I would ideally like, but there should be enough to, to keep that to keep that running nicely. So the reason I put this this one in first is because these then output the uh, junk data cards, which will be passed in here into this machine to be uh, to be uh, crushed down into scrap, and then packed down onto this belt here. So I didn't want to start dealing with the scrap. Uh, until all of the things that made scrap had been, well, dealt with. But you'll notice that this belt also puts everything back onto here. So coming down this belt, there will also be some, um, as well as the junk data, the broken data cards that we passed around here, we'll also put the good data cards that have been successfully formatted. And they'll go back onto this disposal belt and then run down until we deal with them later. So that is sort of deliberate. We will be uh, bringing those down and then dealing with them a bit further down. 
So here, as I said, we're making, making a bit more scrap. And then here, we've got the main scrap processing facility. So all the scrap that comes in is then passed into these recycling facilities, as you can see, chewed down into all of the outputs you get. So in, in uh, with Crastorio 2, we put in a scrap. You might get a iron, you might get copper, you might get stone. 10% chance of each of those. 5% chance of the rare metals. And 10% chance of some heavy oil. So we need to deal with all of those. And you guessed it, I've done it by just... Oh, no, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done it. I was going to say, I've done it by just shoving the back on this belt. I haven't actually done that. <laughs> I've been a little bit tidier than that. So we then have this disposal belt down here, and I reckon that having a single belt here would be okay, because if we look at the numbers here, we've got a 35% uh, th chance of producing something. So we're going to get about a third as many things coming out as go in. So we'll have those all flow down to this belt. There'll be plenty, plenty of room. And then we'll pull out the iron ore, smelt it into iron, pull out the copper ore, smelt it into copper, pull out the rare metals, smelt it into rare metal ingots, and then all of those then get passed down into some stations. So down here we've got a rare metal station, we've got a, a stone station, a copper station, and an iron station. And then finally down here, this will eventually be a memory card station, but we haven't actually got that one up and up and operational yet. But that will be eventually be um, feeding the memory cards into there. So we can have all of these things pass through into these stations. And that means then when somewhere else in the base requires one of these resources, a train can swoop in here, grab them and take them away. How exactly how we're going to do that is going to require a little bit of extra thought, but we'll uh, we'll, we'll 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 get there. Carrying on down here. So this that that has now successfully disposed of junk data cards, uh, broken data cards which I don't think we'll be getting along here, um, blank data cards and scrap. Now, we're also, though, as I mentioned earlier, going to be producing contaminated scrap. So that then will get peeled off here at this step. This step produces, pulls out the contaminated scrap um, onto the uh, on, onto the belt that goes in here. And then in here, we're putting it in, into the into the recycling machine, in, into the decontamination facilities, which will wash it with uh, cosmic water, which there isn't very much of here, but never mind. Uh, it'll wash it wash it out neatly and uh, cleanly, and then turn it back into scrap. Now, unfortunately, I didn't really plan this quite as well. I, I had originally, I'd, I thought of doing dealing with this way up top and then passing it down. So, so again, it, it would be producing the clean scrap and passing it down here. But you need, you have all the, you then have all the different fluids to worry about. And I decided it would be easier um, to have the fluid handling down at the bottom and then have another belt that runs back up again that takes the scrap up to be put back into the into the system up here and then process and then process through here into the uh, to be to be dealt with as 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 I discussed earlier. So this whole system, I believe, is going to work, but we've not had any contaminated scrap passed through yet, because at the moment, the only contaminated scrap that's being generated up here is being passed straight back round, is being cleaned up here, and then, so we're dealing with all of the dirty fluids and things up here, which is a bit, a bit, of a, not a bit rubbish, but we're going to be dealing with that at some point. The other thing we decided we wanted to be able to put on the belt um, was we were, at some point we're going to need to be able to dispose of the contaminated cosmic water and contaminated bio sludge. So at the moment, we've got down here, when we clean out the... Um, when we clean out the the cosmic the contaminated scrap, we got a small chance of um, uranium ore, which I'm going to need to deal with at some point. Uh, we get the scrap out, as I said, which which we'll take away to process and and, and recycle. But then we've also got the um, the contaminated cosmic water and contaminated bio sludge. So. Those get passed through a, a, a cunning tangle of pipes here. The contaminated bio sludge goes down. Um, into this pipe that brings it down here and, and it can be decontaminated in here which turns it into clean bio sludge and contaminated scrap the contaminated scrap of course then gets just fed back up into here to be washed again the and the contaminated cosmic water comes out somewhere over from here in the middle and goes through and then goes into this machine which will turn it into contaminated scrap cosmic water which gets pumped back into the system and uh, contaminated bio sludge. So, so all of these liquids and solids and things, all of these go round and round and round and round until you only get until you eventually get some clean outputs out so eventually we're going to get some bio sludge from here clean bio sludge specifically we're going to get a uh, clean scrap from here and oh and, and uranium and we get um a little bit of cosmic water but that's pipe back around and in again so basically we get out we get out uranium clean bio sludge and um and scrap out of the whole system and those are all, all get taken away to be used elsewhere so the bio sludge is going to be put into these tanks which once we get biological science up and running we will take we'll be able to take it from here take it over dump it into the biological science system and just get rid of it over there because that's going to need quite a lot of it so at the moment it's just one of those things uh, where you, you've got a byproduct that you need to get rid of but fortunately there's another process that uses lots and lots of that byproduct as an input so we can feed it all over there now the other thing that i've been carefully not mentioning is these two um, machines over here that are going to be that are un unbarreling uh, in this case it's uh, contaminated bio sludge and down here it's contaminated cosmic water so that's um, a bit horrible I have to admit 
um, because we're transporting stuff around in, in barrels. But the idea occurred to me while I was streaming, and I suggested it, and chat seemed so enthusiastic and excited by the idea of putting in another step of barrels <laughs> that we could I, I couldn't resist. So what's going to happen in the long run is that systems like this... I don't know. There aren't any actually producing it yet, because we have, I, I don't think. But eventually, there will be systems that produce contaminated biosludge and contaminated cosmic water. At the moment, they're only, I think they're only being made by the recycling system up here. And then we're going to dump that into barrels, and then pump it and, and drop it onto the disposal belt down here. At which point, that can be swept away down into the recycling facility and dealt with. It is a bit horrible, and I'm sincerely hoping that even the biological science isn't going to produce that much um, contaminated biosludge and contaminated cosmic water. We shall see how that goes, though. We may, uh, um, we'll see how much this this system is required. So this will then, unfortunately, unload empty barrels, which are then going to be dropped back onto the disposal chute that just carries on going down and down and down, all the way down here. And the next thing I decided I wanted to do was, well, in order to clean off the uh, contaminated scrap that's coming through, we're going to need a steady supply of cosmic water. So, need to make some cosmic water, got these pipes in place, coming up from down here, as you can see, and down here we have the sort of the fluid processing area of the base. So I've continued with, with, with the plan of bringing up the uh, the lube, the heavy oil and the petroleum gas in barrels. So these get brought up in, in the barrels by, by, a, by a rocket which will land here. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment because some things went horribly, horribly wrong there. We're going to bring up ice as well. It's going to be melted in here. And then so that's going to give us all of the liquids we need. which will run down here. We can make cosmic water here out of water and, and, lube, and, and lube. That can go into a station. And also it'll go out this way to go up here to be used to clean the scrap, the contaminated scrap off as discussed. Now this also, we also have the uh, the heavy oil being brought in here. And that comes down here. And this, this will go down here into uh, this system where we're using it to make thermofluid. And we're also bringing the cosmic water into here along with the petroleum gas in order to make... Um, in order to make the orange goop, the uh, what's, what's, what's it even called, the chemical gel. So once again, that gets fed into the into the tanks here, and then also passed around here to be made into into thermofluid. So we're going to have a system where trains can come along and pick it up, and also it can be made into the thermofluid. Now thermofluid is quite complicated. As you can see here, it requires an input of sulphur, iron, copper. Uh, heavy oil and, and chemical gel. Now conveniently we've got a lot of iron and copper coming from the recycling so my hope is that we'll have enough enough scrap coming in here that we can make enough iron and copper to keep this system running. Now I'm not very confident about that I suspect it's probably not going to be the case so I think we're going to need to bring in at least some iron and copper up here and then bring that out on belts along here and, and, and add, it in, add it into these two belts just to make sure we've always got enough of it available but that's the thing that we'll we'll keep doing. We'll 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 um we'll add that add that one in as as, as and when necessary, and, just, and, and, and in order to keep the system running. So yes, that'll that, um, we, we're also going to need to bring sulphur up. And as you can see, I've got in a um, a loader here that will let any sulphur that gets into this uh, warehouse will be passed out onto here. So we've got a belt for sulphur coming down here. The heavy oil is quite a nice one because again, heavy oil is being produced by the uh, scrap processing up here. So that's all being dumped into this pipe. When, whenever on the on the off chance that we do produce some heavy oil, it runs down here as you can see all the way down here. I had to put a bit of a kink in it here, which is a bit ugly, but you know, we all love a bit of spaghetti, don't we? <laughs> and then it then goes and comes into a tank down here. So what we've got here is we've got a storage tank that means that hopefully means there will always be enough room for us to buffer, for us to pull the the, uh, the heavy oil out of this pipe, put it into the tank. But also, if they if we run a bit short of heavy oil, we can bring some more out of the barrels up here and put it into the system from here. So this is a top up that will that will, so this will will only run when there's less than ten thousand in here. So it would at the mo would run at the moment. The idea is that first we use the heavy oil that's coming from the scrap recycling, and then after that, if there's if we if we still need more, we'll we'll empty some of these barrels out. So the system is fairly standard factorio. That should that should work without any difficulties. So yes, that will eventually once we have all of the inputs together, um, we'll start producing the chemical gel. Uh, sorry, not the chemical gel, the thermofluid. And then we'll be able to ship that off to all the places it's needed and get the factory up and running. So as usual, that's then just dropped out straight into this train here. And I think we'll we'll, we'll stick with the idea of shipping out warm and then cooling it on site. Because I think doing all of the cooling in one central place is just going to be... Too, it's going to lead to too many trains running around the factory all the time, I suspect. So we're going to probably do on-site cooling. At least that's the current plan. So, yes, there's a couple of problems with this. And they're both related to rocketry. So the first one is, as you can see here, we had a, we had, we had an unfortunateness. Um, we had a rocket that was supposed to be landing up here on on this on the landing pad that's up up here at the top where everything comes into. 
uh, that unfortunately um, got a bit confused because it turns out I hadn't changed the default name of a landing pad, so it was still called um, Norvis Orbit Landing Pad. So I've now renamed it to Norbit Fluid, so we shouldn't have that problem again, but I'm going to need to go and make sure the other one, I, th I think I probably should rename the other one just to make sure. So yes, we had a rocket land here with all the base, all the supplies for the um, for the main space bus. And that meant they then had to get, uh, 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 they were all all over here in the wrong place. Now, I did briefly consider doing a warehouse of shame, dumping my inventory into it, and then just grabbing everything out of there into my inventory, flying up, dumping it, flying back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But then it, I decided that was a horrible, horrible idea and would just take far too long and be far too much of a headache. So, what I've done is I've put in this excessively long belt here that is currently, as you can see, emptying all the nonsense out of this um, out of this warehouse. So there we go, the, um, all, all of the green circuits have gone, we've now got electric motors coming out. Um, and if we follow this belt up here, you can see it's a very, very, very long belt, there's a lot of green circuits there, and some red circuits. And all of that is flowing into the, into the landing pad up here. So, once this is emptied, I can then come along and just rip this belt back up again, because it won't be needed anymore. But in the meantime, all of the stuff that came up by rocket by mistake is being passed back up into here where it belongs and it can then be passed out and filtered through here. Now there is a slight danger so the rocket that came up won't have then landed in my in my new landing pad uh, that wasn't connected to the uh, requirements list over here or to the uh, the stock list over here so that means another rocket then came up with a second copy of all of that stuff which is a bit unfortunate because that means we now have twice as much of all of those things than we we're expecting to get. However I think there is enough uh, flex and spare space in this uh, in this storage system over here that we can probably absorb an additional rocket's worth of stuff. Um, but I am going to need to keep an eye on that at the beginning of the next episode to make sure it's all gone properly. So yes, that's being fed up here. As you can see, that's a lot of a lot of electric motors and a small amount of that's tritium that I'm disposing of. Um, and then that looks like the mimosite plates and um, uh, uranium and lithium and, and so on. It's all being fed up from here, being dumped back into where it belongs. So that wasn't too serious a problem. I felt rather silly when the rocket arrived, but it was it was a job of about 10 minutes to get it fixing itself and then just leave it leave it running. The more serious concern is that we're going to need another rocket to be coming up up here from Norvis with the, the supplies that are required. So at the moment, the shopping list has um, lubricant, petroleum gas, heavy oil, sulfur, and ice. Those are things we get. I've decided I need. Also, going to need to bring up some. Um, uh, copper and iron, probably almost certainly in ingot form. So how and how we're going to do that is, is slightly tricky. So at the moment, down here on Norvis, we've got the system where we've got all the, all the, uh, the lanes from the bus going up to the rocket to load that up with all, all the bits and pieces that we think we need up in space at the moment. Great. That that works. There's 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 no problems with that. It's it's a bit it's a little bit of a mess the way it's been plumbed in down here, but it does work, and we're loading it all into the rocket. Great. The um, the problem is that some of the extra, some of the sort of slightly weirder things like these barrels we've got uh, we've got lube we've got heavy oil we've got petroleum gas those are all being brought in in a sort of slightly weird way so we don't have all these barrels on the bus so I can't just pull them off for another rocket I can't sensibly t change the d destination for this rocket to, to alternate back and forth between those two different places um, so the the my my first thought was well I'll put in another rocket silo. Um, maybe over here. Uh, problem is we're getting a bit close to this wall so we might need to move the wall out and give us a bit more space but then there's probably going to be, yeah, there's biters out here so it's going to make that a little bit difficult. Only a little bit difficult but still it's, it's a thing that would need to be done. Uh, but this could, this could yes, could, could be moved out to give us a bit more space. Um, and that would work quite nicely because we've got the supply of heavy oil and petroleum gas up here so those could be fed down to the down there. Now the, the, the problem is that we don't have a supply of ice We don't, and, and the supplies of iron ingots and copper ingots are being brought in by these trains over here which is a little bit weird. Um, we could potentially have in another station like this one. So this is... This is the weird process we had for bringing in bulk ingredients that we didn't want to bring via the bus. So up here we've got a station that's watching out for certain things that it needs. Um, goodness knows how it, exactly how it works. It's, but it's, it, it, is, it is requesting things and I'd have to look into exactly how this works. But it's requesting things and then when one of those things is required, a train load of it comes from here. So as you can see we've got copper ingots, steel ingots, iron ingots and, and a couple of the modules because we wanted those in large quantities and they weren't, they weren't on the bus so we couldn't just pull them through from there. Um, so yeah, in theory, I could perhaps set one of these trains up to have another um, uh, another stuff, stuff to Norbit drop station um, that is set up to work with that. And 
Yeah, we'd have to, I'd have to have a bit of a think about how to get that to work, and, and getting the two of them to work nicely in, in unison would be a bit tricky. The other alternative would be to have even more stations up here and more trains, uh, with, with all, so two copies of everything and, and, and loading in there, but that's, that's kind of horrible and I don't really want to do that. The other other possibility is to put just to pull the plates off straight off the bus down here because these plates are probably now are now, are in fact now being made from um, from ingots so we've got the slightly more efficient recipe for making them but it does that would be more expensive logistically but then on the flip side we're not going to be taking all that much stuff up there so maybe it's not so bad I don't know these are all possibilities all possible ways of getting the stuff that I need up there but none of them are none of them are great and also we, we're going to need we're going to need to get ice to here somewhere as well so that's probably going to be another train on here anyway so yes there are lots of possibilities here but also lots of um, none of them are, none of them are ideal and I'm just going to have to yeah have to have a bit of a think about how I want to do all of these things and try and find the least bad way of getting all of those things I need up into space where I can then start to deal with them um, if you have a bright idea for a completely different way of doing it, maybe, maybe, uh, do, do let me know. And one other possibility, actually, come to think of it, is to start is to use delivery cannons for everything. So we already have um, ice on the delivery cannon network. So up here, where we're making we're making ice, and then that's being passed out to here. So it'd be fairly straightforward to put in another receiver and another delivery cannon and start firing ice up. So put in a delivery cannon chest to receive that. Um, it's possible we could do that with sulfur as, as well. I mean, there, there might, there might, there's a fairly re, there's a reasonable chance that somewhere we're shipping out. Uh, yeah, here we go. Sulfur and iron and copper. So I could put, I could use one of these sort of systems to bring up actually all of the ingredients I need. I think, um, except for oh, except for the oils and things. So we'd still need, to, we'd still need to be shipping um, the the heavy oil, the lube, and the uh, petroleum gas up somewhere as well. So that'd be that'd be a little bit more um, awkward, unless I just shipped up the heavy oil and then converted all of those from that. But we'd rather do all of the advanced processing of the petroleum stuff down here in the big oil area because these ones, at least in theory, we could fill all of these up with with uh, productivity modules. Uh, so that and then the, and here we go. These ones have been filled up with productivity modules. So we're getting significantly more sulfur out. We, we when we could potentially be getting more uh, lube out from here for the for the inputs. So it's, it's it's a lot more efficient if you do if you do all the processing down on the ground and then transport the, uh, the the products up in whatever state they're needed. And the other thing is that this is of course only going to be temporary until we get spaceships up and running. So and, and maybe and, uh, so there's there's, there's going to be other considerations in there as well. So it's, maybe I should just do whatever seems quickest and easiest, but that again feels a little bit dirty. So there's 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 lots of options in there, lots of decisions to make and I'm not quite sure what the best way to do it is. But in the meantime, yes, we've got, this is now, I've, I feel like I've made quite a lot of progress here. I've, I've built up a nice big scrap processing facility. I've built up the processing for all of the all of the main liquids that we, we, start, we you, you need at the start up here. So all of this now is, is, is should, should work quite nicely. And every single thing that I've built up here is built with that sort of expandability in mind. So when I, when I realise that actually this isn't remotely enough um, processing for scrap, because it won't be, in the future we're going to be producing crazy amounts of scrap. When it is, when it when it when it turns out to not be enough, I could just extend this out this way as far as I need to to make more and more and more and more machines doing it. Same with the smelting machines, and, and so it, it yeah, there's lots of there's lots of capacity for expansion here. Everything has been built with it with expansion in mind, with the possible exception of the unloading from barrels down here, because that I hope to be eliminating in the not too distant future. So yes, lots of different. Um, Lots of different things going on there, but uh, all, all, with the, all with the basic intent of getting rid of all of the junk that's going to be coming in. I do still need to deal with the uh, with the, the empty barrels, actually. That's a, a thing I haven't considered yet. The empty barrels are going to be pouring down here. I'll probably convert them into steel, because that's what you do with empty barrels, but then I'm going to need another station that takes steel off to, to somewhere where it's required, and that's going to be... Um, I don't know. We get, we're going to have some interesting times with uh, set, setting these things up, I can tell. While I was working on it, Tristan pointed out that I was running low on power. Um, we've, we now seem to be okay. We're producing uh, producing uh, up to 240 and we're using 120, so we've got twice the power we need. But that's most at least partly because uh, one of the big machines... Yes, here we go. You can see this uh, particle accelerator kicking in and out. And when that kicks in, that uses an extra 100 megawatts. So <laughs> that takes up most of this slack in here. But, you know, it's... Um, it, we, we've got the, we've got the headroom for it because Tristan has come in and put in some additional solar. I'm actually not sure where, because I thought this was the solar that I put in. 
maybe he's just he's probably just expanded the uh, the design I already had. So he's he's put in, he's put in some extra solar, so we've got enough power. He's also put some speed modules into some of the energy science machines because we weren't making energy science fast enough. So it's because he had Mark one tier, uh, tier one uh, speed modules in a couple of machines over here, so we'll get a little bit more of that science through. And as as I said at the, right at the beginning of the the video, he's he's also been adding to the railways a bit. So we've now got this sort of. The, this, this 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 backbone and some ribs coming off it. I did extend this one quite a bit further because it just wasn't big enough for my needs. But now, but yes, the uh, the the, the uh, that has now meant it's big enough for all of these stations along here, all of which need to need to be renamed. So we'll 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 do that at some point. I think the next thing to look at is to drop down onto Norvis fairly briefly. I've talked a little bit about the uh, the about getting the, uh, the a rocket launching uh, area in over here, but also uh, Mark has also been busy down on Norvis. Uh, he's he's. Well, I say I say busy. He's, he's done what he, what he would probably say is some, are some, are some fairly minor things. Um, he's put tier two modules onto the robo network from um, Circuit City up here. Sorry, not Circuit City. Uh, module City up here. So I think that that probably means there's some. Uh, oh, there's probably some provider chests in here somewhere. I, I don't I don't know I don't know exactly where they are. But we are now able to provide um, tier two module tier two productivity and speed modules to the rest of the base from here, which is nice. Um, he says he's fixed rocket sections, so presumably there was some. Some issue with the production of rocket sections over um, here. Is this where? It's, yes, this is where it's being done. I'm, I'm not sure what he's fixed, but apparently he has. So, um, thank you. <laughs> and he's also set it so the rocket will only request stuff when the rocket has been built, or hopefully when it has, um, when when the rocket has arrived, the previous rocket has arrived on the target. So the idea behind that is it means you don't end up with a second rocket being mostly being sort of filled up to a bit too much before the previous one has got there. That's all fairly minor stuff. Tristan <laughs> has quite a lot of. Uh, things I'm going to struggle a little bit with here. So Tristan has set on Taishikuten, he set the priority on loading the Imasai, on the Imasai that's coming in here. He's tweaked the numbers here, so we now have minus a thousand instead of minus one. Um, and that allows you to set, pri that allows you to prioritize on different planets. So he set it to, to take from planets other than Agnea first. And I'm not, qu he's, he's not quite sure why he wanted to do this, but he, he said he did last time, so he's believing himself. <laughs> so the way this sort of prioritization system works is you have, um, as, as you see here, you have the minus a thousand on there, and then the places that are supposed to be shipping out as a priority will ship when um, when it drops, when the amount in here drops below zero. So as soon as it gets below zero, they know that there's um, less than a thousand in this chest. So all, all the high priority planets uh, will start shipping their uh, their their site through. If for some reason those those high priority planets are running low, maybe it's maybe it's because they don't have enough throughput, or maybe it's because they're run, they're, they're, the the mines their mines are starting to run out. Then we'll start to ship it through in, um, from the from the lower pri priority planets like Agnea, and we think it's probably Agnea is probably the one because the the power there is technically not free because we're producing it by um, uh, from uranium, so we're generating it f uh, and also having to bring in quite a lot of water. So we're sort of saving saving that planet as much as we can. But then, if yes, as I say, if the numbers carry on dropping here, this might get down to minus 100, minus 200, minus 300. So you can then set um, the other planets to deliver if there's less than minus 200, or minus 300, or minus 900 uh, coming on the signal from this planet. And that means they'll only sh they'll only ship if there's if there's less of it than if there's a, a serious shortage of it, rather than if there's only a minor shortage of it. And as you can see, it's dropping in there in quite large quantities because there's. There's more than one planet shipping shipping the uh, Imasite over, but that means but that's fine because these chests are reasonably big. Um, <laughs> I say that this is filling up quite quite alarmingly. It's getting a little bit close to full. Um, it's getting very very close to full. Maybe we should uh, not have um, minus a thousand on that chest uh, on that uh, input stress. Maybe it should be minus five hundred or something. Um, actually, that wouldn't help. Maybe we should have more different numbers on different different planets so they all so only one planet starts shipping at a time. It has been okay. It has been okay. So we got below we got below. Um, a thousand which is two rows and then we've got room for another 20 stacks but apparently there's enough planets delivering the stuff that well each time it each time it goes below you get um several uh, delivery cannon uh, delivery cannon capsules coming over as you as you saw from each planet so we're clearly getting close to we're clearly getting about 18 of them coming through which is or 19 of them coming through, which is rather a lot, to be honest. But it does seem to be ca just about capable of dealing with that. We might need to think about having an additional storage system uh, here if if it gets any more crazy. But that is now passing the the Imasite through. We have more Imasite than we know what to do with. The limiting factor, as I think I touched on in an earlier episode, is now the uh, the rate we can produce the hydrogen at over here from from cracking water down in these electrolyzers. 
So I've put in another two electrolyzers here. They haven't been placed because there aren't any on this planet. But in general, this this whole area could do with a bit of an expansion. So so at some point, we're going to send over a rocket, maybe with a person in it, maybe not, over to here to to, type, to expand this area up quite significantly. Now, as usual, I've made it in the in the standard easily expandable design. So it's going to be yeah, fairly trivial to put more and more and more and more machines up up upwards from here as as, as we need them. Uh, there might be a little bit of fine. Uh, awkward fiddliness with the, some of the pipes but basically it should, should be able to we should be able to expand this quite easily uh, the limiting factor on this earth previously was the amount of uh, mineral water we had now um, because the system shut down for a while because we didn't have any emocyte and now we've just started shipping it and we started shipping it in again now um, we have plenty of uh, mineral water the shortage is the, is the, um, the hydrogen um, but if we get this thing running at speed again then we're going to have some mineral water problems so um, the, the obvious answer to that is to set up some mineral water mining over here where there's a significant amount of it. We can dig that up, just feed it in over here as a lower priority rather than only using what comes out of the uh, core processing over here. But that's that's fairly straightforward. We're not going to have any difficulties with that. We can, we can get that up and running um, when, we, when, when someone comes out here to, to upgrade the, the system in general. So yes, that's, uh, that will get that up and running a, a, bit more, a bit more quickly, a bit more smoothly. So... Now, in the continuing the uh, let's sort of make our way gradually out from the from the sun. So we, we're not talking about Agnea because I've left that one well well and truly behind now. Uh, we've gone to Norvis. We've gone to um, oh Tristan said said mentioned that he's done. Uh, a slight boost of the cryonite rod production on Dracut um, because it was it wasn't being limited by the core production rate, so we might as well have a little bit more from there. Fine. Um, and now we're getting out uh, a little bit further out. We talked about Tashkut and we've got out to Bigrid now. And this one is uh, is Mark's planet where he's producing large quantities of the um, uh, of, of all the Vita products. As you can see from the diagram, it's, it's fairly similar to a lot of the other systems. We've got uh, so we've got the um, we've got core mining drills somewhere. Um, let, let's zoom out a little bit further. Oh, here you go. Here's a core with a core mining drill here. So it's digging up core fragments as usual, putting them onto a belt. They're flowing around here and then being taken into uh, all the way. Ooh, where do they? Where do they go to? <laughs> all the way along here. Then they own them back along this belt. We've got a slightly fuller belt because there's another core mining drill up here, and presumably another another core mining drill off this way. Now I don't know. I don't know how many. Whether he's going to stick with the just bringing it all in by um, by belt like this, or whether at some point in the future he's going to add in some train systems. Um, he does seem to have expanded quite a long way. But we'll talk about that in a, in a, in, a, in a moment or few. So the the vault, the core fragments are being fed over here to these pulverizers, which are currently stopped because they're blocked on the output. But then, as you can see from the diagram, these will turn the Vita Melange core fragments into vanilla core fragments, stone and Vita uh, Vita whatever it's whatever it's called at this stage. What is it called at this stage? Vita just Vita Melange at this stage. Um, uh, the vitamin melange gets split out and goes into another pulverizer, which will then pulverize it down into the uh, vitamin melange powder, what's it called? Nuggets. Uh, all of the waste products from these, because we're getting we're getting out wood and stone and, from here as well. So those are both, those are then being fed out with the with the with the uh, assistance from these uh, filter splitters. We've got these dump belts that go up here, and then we've got so we've then got lots and lots of stone and wood and core fragments. The uh, the stone it appears is being filtered out to be made into sand for a later step in the process. The other the core fragments and, and wood are being taken away. We'll we'll have a look and see where those goes later. It still seems very very weird to me that the wood is one of the byproducts of this. But I suppose this is where all the other ones they're supposed to be ores that you refine to make metals. So you get out you get out sands, you get out contaminated water, you get out stone, that sort of thing. This one is supposed to be far more organic. So you get out, uh, so which is which is why you get out the wood from it. So presumably you're pulling out some sort of um, maybe some sort of heavy duty moss or something. You're ripping large quantities of that out of the earth, or or sort of or maybe it's um, something like peat, which you could which is again very organic. So you then you then process that down you get out the part you want and the part you don't want it and then you spit out a load of woody uh, it, I mean it, it says wood but maybe it's just sort of organic byproduct that's sort of just 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 plant plant matter that can be taken away and dealt with somewhere else <laughs> I'm not sure what the best way to look at it is uh, but anyway we're taking out the stuff we actually care about the vitamin lunch nuggets uh, that's being merged from all of these and then going into, into up here uh, where where we're doing another step of processing and this one is this one takes takes sand as an input which is why we've got these stone belts going in up here feed, feeding into the pulverizer so you get the sand out um, at the moment it seems like we've got more than enough st I don't know it's, it's kind of hard to tell because the system isn't running because it's full uh, I wonder if I can just do a sort of a bit of a dirty um, modification here if I chances are Mark has put in has, has got enough supplies up here I can just put in another one of those like that and um, we can now then empty this uh, warehouse out 
And there we go. So we're now emptying the. Uh, we've now put some artificial load on the system. We're pulling out, pulling out the um, the vitamin melanin spice at the rate of well three yellow bells, which isn't amazing, but it's it's enough to keep the input running, which is exactly which is what I wanted to do, which is the whole point of, whole whole point of this this uh, tweak that I've made. So now that's starting to pull in the um, the vita, vita bloom, I think it's called vitamin melanin bloom that's coming in from all the other steps. That's getting combined. That's getting cooked by the vulcanite, and when that's producing the vitamin melanin spice and a small amount of uh, and a small amount of the vitamin lange extract and a bit of methane gas. So let's have a bit of a look and see what's going on here. So the, the, the solid outputs, the, uh, the vitamin lange spice and the vitamin lange extract are being brought up into this warehouse. Um, as you can see by the sort of proportions that have been generated, we've got a whole 72 extract and a load, and enormous quantities of spice. So if we look at look, looking over here, we can see that, yeah, it's a... For, wow. So for every, we bring in 200 blooms and that produces 40 spice and, a, and 0 0.1 extract. So that's a crazy, crazy ratio. And it makes me think that the extract is just put in there. It's either for a sort of a covarexy enrichment process, which you're looking at this, there does seem to be an enrichment process available, um, or more, 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 or, or also it's potentially it's just been put in here to annoy you a bit because then there's an extra output coming out of the system that you then have to deal with. But anyway, let's not be uh, let's not be negative about it. So yes, we've got we've got all of this all of this pouring out of here. It's all fully uh, fully productivity moduled and speed moduled by the beacon. That's very very nice. Um, and now, if we look if we look a bit further down here, we can see that yes, once this, when the system is actually running properly, it, all all of this runs through very very nicely. The stone flows straight into the uh, into the sand making machines over here, and and is being made in, and is then being allowing us to make all these blooms. The wood is being disposed of. The core chunks are being disposed of. I. To be honest, I had no doubt that um, Mark would have built a, a very, a very uh, well-balanced system. This is going to be dispo using up everything in the, in, in, in about, in about the right sort of quantities. So uh, yes, I had, I had full faith. I just wanted to see the thing running. To be honest, because it's, it's much nicer to look at this and say, yes, you, look, you can see, you can see how it's working. We're producing the sand down here. We're, we're uh, turning it into the vitamin lounge bloom, and you can just, you can just see what it's doing. It's much nicer to, to see it actually in, in action. So it looks like we've got then. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, we've got the same sort of thing over here, repeated. We're we're, we're bringing the uh, we're bringing the uh, vulcanite out to it, but everything else is is sort of basically the same over here, and that's producing another st steady stream of um of, of the uh, the vitamin and vita spice, which is going, again going into the warehouse. Uh, however, this one has been set to only run when there's less than a hundred in there, and that's because this one and this one and this one and this one and this good grief, these are all running off the um off the core fragment inputs. So these are the ones that are running off what, what we basically would call free resources because it's being produced in an essentially unlimited quantities. We're just chucking it all on here from the, from the core mining drills. And it's the usual thing. I've said this before, but I'll say it again um, because it's, it's still relevant. It's it's free in that it's produced a certain amount per minute. And so you want to try and use it up at the same rate per minute because otherwise it's wasted. Whereas over here, we have it being dug up out of a mine, and this what this mine has a fixed amount in it, and it will produce that amount uh, to at whatever speed, basically at whatever speed you want it to. Because you can fill it up with these really, really fast, powerful drills, and then it'll come out at whatever whatever speed you want. And at the moment, that speed appears to be one blue belt. And then down here, we can process that as fast as we like, and then and, and turn that into an into an into an into an emergency top up. So we'll be using this to top up the system over here as and when required. So the other um, things that we're, be, we're producing, so we've got we've got the uh, core chunks and the wood being dumped down here as, for disposal. Uh, the wood is being uh, collected over here. Uh, we've got we're keeping some in a chest for because of reasons I'm not sure why. Um, there may be, may be uses for it or there may not. And the rest of it is just being burned down into processed fuel, which I imagine Mark is going to at some point maybe use for generating power, maybe use for trains. Whatever, whatever it is, he, there's 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 plenty of space here, and these and it compacts down quite neatly because all of the wood that's been created in however long is then flowing into here, and it takes quite a lot of wood, as you can see, to make even one um, uh, one processed fuel, and it stacks up quite high. So this is going to dispose of a lot of enormous quantity of the wood into the processed fuel here, and then that can be again requested. So he's, he's put this into red chests, and maybe that's going to be then um, flown off by logistics bot to stations. I don't know. We'll see. But there don't seem to be any there don't seem to be any train systems on this planet yet. But um, we'll. See. But as as I was saying earlier, maybe Mark's going to introduce some of those when he goes off further afield to get some of these more distant um, uh, core core fragment patches. Now I suspect, as usual, the yes, the core fragments are then going into core processing up here. This is the same system that uh, we've seen used everywhere, everywhere else. Um, and interestingly, he's got a um, 
of, of a okay oh yeah Pyro, pyroflux he doesn't need pyroflux he needs he needs uh, vulcanites so this this um the pyroflux over here is, is useless so he's turning that into into he's barreling that up and sending it off probably to norvis um yes that's then getting off shipped off to norvis because you, ne you need to do something with pyroflux Otherwise, this looks pretty standard. We've got the, uh, the usual overflow of all the things that aren't wanted. The stone is flowing down here because stone is a thing he does want. But we've got the um, all, all the all the the uranium, the rare metals, and the and the iron being disposed of as normal. Um, this is yeah, very much the same as ever. So over here, we've got then the, the production of all of the delivery cannon capsules. Uh, as you can see, we've got plenty of those at the moment. They're building up and up and up and up. Um, and at the moment, all that's being shipped out from here is Immersite, because yet another, this is yet another planet that has an Immersite mine on it. So uh, so Mark has set that up. Again, and, and another belt of doom going from that. Another extremely long belt running all the way from here <laughs> up to here in order to, uh, to ship that out. But then eventually... We're going to have a row of um, delivery cannons along here that are going to be shipping out all of the vitamin ash products, and we'll be shipping those over to well, most probably mostly to uh, the space station because I think that's because we're going to need a lot of it there for the biological sciences. And but we can also ship it out to anywhere else it's required if we realise that we we need more anywhere else. Um, as usual, we've got the standard uh, free power generation system and lots and lots of the free power generation system, some of which is still under, under construction. Lots and lots of that, <laughs> and also the. Um, uh, what do you call them? It's uh, filters, and this belt looks unusually full for a filter belt. Let's let's follow it and find out where where, where things happen with this filter belt. So, yeah, up here, okay, the processing is not processing quite as. Basically, he's got too <laughs> so he's got too many um, clean filters on the belt, so it's it's backed up, and we're not getting we're not able to pull the clean filters off it fast enough to put them out at this slightly slower rate that we're trying to trying to ship them out at. This this presumably is completely full. Yeah, so he's got he's just got rather a lot of the filters, but to be honest, that's not actually a problem because it looks like he's got it set up so that it drops the dirty filters onto the near side and the clean filters on the far side. The, um, I was going to say it's not a problem because it will eventually use up all of the uh, all of the excess clean filters because there's a something like well, there's a ninety percent chance that you get the filters back when you clean. Is it here? Okay, maybe it's a ninety percent chance or ninety-five percent chance or something of you, you getting the filters back when they're used in the in the um, in the in, by the air purifiers. You don't always get a dirty one back out again. So he's got so eventually the number in this buffer will decline a bit. The concern is that you might find that some of these filters will stop working because they'll build up too many dirty filters inside them um, because we can't get rid of any of the uh, clean ones up here. So and all of these buffers are filled up. So maybe it needs a look, maybe it doesn't. It's not it's not too serious to be honest. Um, it will eventually it will eventually sort itself out, but there is a chance that some of these filters might stop working. But as usual, this filter belt will go all the way around. It goes through all of the um, all of the power production up here. So these are all getting all of the uh, pollution's getting cleaned out here. It's going around the edge of it or everywhere that does anything dirty like over here where we're doing the core mining. It's just keeping the atmosphere nice and clean. So it's keeping all of the pollution well inside the base so we don't we don't worry about upsetting the biters. So on this planet, because this is a Vitamelange planet, one of the additional things that Mark has to worry about is Biter Meteors. He's got a massive meteor defense system up here because any because this is a Vitamelange planet, any meteor that gets through will probably have biters on it. So you could have a meteor crash land, say, here, completely harmlessly, maybe it knocks out one of these trees or something like that, but then some biters will crawl out of it, it'll turn into a biter nest, and then things will just gradually go, go from bad to worse. So... It's it's it, yeah it's, it's a good thing that he's got a lot a, lo a huge number of the uh, defensive guns up here. How many is this incidentally? One two, seven by seven, so forty nine minus the one that's missing in the middle. So we have forty eight meteor defense guns here. That is, that is a lot. <laughs> um, I mean I'm. I'm not going to do the maths to work out how, what the chances are of this missing missing a, a, a meteor coming in, but it, 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 the chances are very very small. <laughs> this is a crazy number of them. But as I said, it is it is rather more serious. Like on a, on a normal planet, the worst thing that could happen is that a meteor comes in and breaks a, a, a vital cable or a vital belt that is um, is keeping a chunk of the factory running. On this one, it could mean that there's biters in, inside the uh, inside the protected area, and then you're in real trouble, and things things are likely to go badly. Especially as, as usual, all the defences are over here on the edge wall, so it's a, it wouldn't defend particularly well against a, against a biter incursion. 
So, yes, uh, but very well defended against that. He's also got the standard umbrella defense in over here as well, because you need that, because otherwise you'll get a, a coronal mass ejection will come through and just destroy your planet. So, yeah, basically, in, in a word, he's got the normal, the standard um, protections in along here. He's also put in a stone mine, I believe, which is, yes, over here. So there's a stone mine, much the same as every other mine. Digs all the stuff up, puts it onto a belt, comes in here. And this is a top-up, presumably. Yeah, this will be a top-up for down here. For, oh, for these, for these ones which don't have enough... Um, Aren't, presumably aren't producing quite enough stone. Um, there's a little bit of a top up available from the from the belts here. I guess the uh, the insert the loaders sorry will load much more quickly than the inserters will. So we get a sort of effectively we get a priority for anything that's coming through from here, and then a lower priority for anything that's being brought in over here. So yes, you can see the you can see that the loaders are flooding in as much as they can, and then you're getting a little bit of top up coming in here from the um, from from the stone belt. So okay, that that that, that explains why that's working quite so quite so smoothly and, and, and generally nicely. Um, oh, also, I think, yes, there's, there's slightly more to it than that. A loader will load up a, an input to, um, I believe, a loader will fill up an input as if you'd loaded it in by hand. So this number will go up much, much higher. Whereas an inserter will only load it up to the amount that's required for three or four builds. Let's see if we can find one that's stopped. Yes, here's one that's stopped and the stone is backed up completely. So, yes, here you can see the se <clears throat> there's 78 in on this side whereas an inserter, as you can see over here, because this one has stopped, an inserter will only load up to a much, much smaller number. I'm not sure why that one stopped actually. I mean, oh! Oh, because the output is very full, so the machine has stopped. Yeah, okay, there we go, that's why. So this will only load, it'll load in with the inserter when this output gets down to worryingly low, which might be, I don't know, less than a stack. But since the input is currently capable of keeping... The input from this belt is currently capable of keeping up with it, we don't see this one running. We don't, it doesn't need to. Uh, okay, that's that's a neat system. I, li I like the way we've got the balance, the, the difference between... The, taking taking advantage of one of the big differences between loaders and inserters. I like that. It's really neat. So, yeah, see, this this was, this, this sand is getting being got through a bit more quickly. So that got right down, down a bit too low. So this inserter loaded some in. That's very interesting. I'd, I'd not thought. I've. I'd not. I think I was vaguely aware of the difference between the two, and how they how they operated. But I hadn't thought of actually using it quite like that uh, to, to 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 do the prioritisation. That's a really neat idea. I approve of that. Mark would also like to liberate a bit more space. I think he's he's done he's done quite a bit of it, as you can tell by the sort of the scars from the uh, nuclear artillery over here, um, and the fact that he's, you, you can see his expansion all the way over here with the uh, the roboports and the um, the roboport and power grid that's just read it out all the way across him. In fact, I turn that on, it makes it really, really obvious where he's claimed. Um, so he's been he was talking about just basically going southwest all the way to the edge of the world. So maybe that means, yeah, potentially he could, without a, too much effort, there's there he could put a wall across here and then claim all of this area. Would it be worth it? No, there's no there's no core seams over there. So maybe put a wall here instead because you can get that core, core seam and that one and that one. It's not a huge number of them. But yes, it allows for significantly more uh, more vitamin lounge being produced, and we are going to need that once we get on to doing the uh, doing the research with the, doing the uh, biological researches. The other thing is, as I say, then is going to be just setting this up so that it actually starts shipping the uh, the vitamin lounge out. Because as you can see, we've got a actually no, the, no, I take it back. There's one more step. The other step that he's probably going to want to do here is is the um, vitamin lounge in, enrichment process. So uh, what's it called? Uh, extract this one. So as as we, we looked at earlier, when you process the bloom, you get a tiny amount of vitamin lange extract. It's a, a four hundredth of the amount of the uh, vitamin lange spice you get out. But also, you can do this recipe where you take in thirty of the spice and one of the extract. And uh, so this is this is another sort of enrichment process, like the uh, the vulcanite one or the uh, the Coverex one, where you get twenty and then you get twenty of your vitamin lange spice back, and you get four to eight, maybe call it six, vitamin lange extract back out and some light oil. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a a bit of a messy side effect -y, side, side product -y process but i think having having this as another as a um, to give us a, a nice supply of the vitamin lange extract as well as the vitamin lange spice because i'm fairly sure we're going to end up needing both of these yes here we go so you need the spice for the biochemical data the genetic data um and then when you enrich it, you then need that for prod, prod fours you need it for biological science packs you need it for um bioculture apparently so yes we, we are going to probably going to need vitalic acid at some point as well so that's another one with nitric acid so this is a not yet but for now i think it probably i think one of one of mark's um, other jobs here before he before he leaves this planet is going to be to is going to be to take in a lot of the um 
the Vi Vita Milan, the Vita Spice in here, and turn it into the Vita Extract um, through the through the enrichment process. So that is going to put a heavy load on the uh, on on the system that he's built up. But I mean, there's there's so much there's so much of it available here that I think it's going to be able to keep up. Um, I think we're going to be we're going to have a we're going to be able to have a nice a nice strong supply of this coming through. This is impressive imp impressively scaled let put it that way <laughs> um speaking of impressively scaled we shall go and look at what mike has been doing uh to in tomorrow's video but for now i think that's everything i want to talk to you about uh so come back tomorrow to see how uh, mike has been scaling things up and um and, and it's been sort of rubbing my face in a little bit because i made some, some some snarky well i made some snarky comments that i immediately took back in the last video um but i don't think he's forgiven me yet so we'll 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 talk, we'll talk about that tomorrow um, and also we're going to be having a look at what Tristan's been doing on Njord and that is another speaking of building things on very on very large scales so there's quite a lot more to, uh, a lot more has been done we had a very very productive uh, stream yes, uh, this um, this week where we got as, as you, you saw all of the uh, the scrap disposal I was doing on in, in Norbit and now and, and all of the all of the massive build up that uh, Mark has been doing over here still not sure what he's going to be doing with his methane gas um, maybe I, I suppose you could probably burn it for power let's have a let's have a look I think you can also turn it into um, let's see methane gas so you can use be but you can use if you shipped this to to um, Norbit which would be awkward because it would be it because it's a fluid we could combine it with the bio sludge to make crude oil which is lovely um, we could you can make methane ice out of it that could that'd be a much better way of transporting it around actually so maybe maybe we'll do that if we decide we want it for something um you can oh you, know, you can make nutrient gel out of it so we're probably going to need that in space at some point although unless unless there's an alternative recipe that we're going to use instead barrel it uh put it in a pressure vessel um make naquium out of it okay so we're going to need it somewhere at some point um but a lot of these are sort of advanced things you know, you can make it into processed fuel as well so at the moment, I suspect the most sensible thing to do with all this methane gas is going to either be burn it for power, possibly as processed fuel, or turn it into methane ice and ship it over to Norbit for future pr purposes. Oh, and it's going to be a while till we need any of those future purposes. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be... Uh, there isn't really a particularly good use for it at the moment, but I think stockpiling it is going to be... I was going to say it's going to be problematic. We've got we've produced given the amount of with this we've produced the fact that we've only got like um 2000 in each of these tanks suggests so maybe we'll be okay for a while um i don't know i'm sure mark has considered it and we'll we'll find out what to we'll find out what he's going to do with it later right so yes please come back tomorrow there'll be a more more factorio update looking at the uh, the planets further out into further out outside the asteroid belt in the sort of in the in the danger zone um which will be having a uh, let's see what else is happening so then there'll be another stream on monday when we should be continuing with all of this sort of stuff i shall be scratching my head over how to get all of those products up into space and seeing what i can come up with there will be an xcom stream on wednesday so i am currently working my way through um, the original classic xcom uh, getting lots and lots of uh, lots of my friends horribly killed unfortunately but you know it's uh, it's going quite well as as, as, as a video series does I'm, I'm really enjoying it and i think everyone who's watching it is is as well so please come along to that and i'll try and squeeze in some um, tuesday and thursday videos if you're a um if you're a channel su supporter you'll get a, a week early access to all, for all of those uh make sure you're on the discord and come along and ask about it and you'll be and you'll be added in to, added in over there Finally, please check out the channel sponsor. That's tree4.be. If you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you can get 20% uh, off your first month, and they will host a Factorio or Minecraft or various other game servers for you. Um, and yeah, they seem to be nice and cheap, nice and quick. So yeah, can can recommend. So once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next part of this video. Bye bye. <laughs>